On the 1st of December 1945, a German general was tied to an execution stake, and he was then forced to face his firing squad. Quickly the execution squad shot straight, and brought an end to the life of Anton Dossler, a man who would, during the Second World War, order the executions of many different American soldiers. At the end of the Second World War, a number of German generals were brought to their executions for their involvement in war crimes and crimes against humanity. Some of these men were believed to have been responsible for the slaughter committed by German soldiers. Many of the men and women were sentenced to death for their involvement in the concentration camps, and some of these, including the guards of Stutthof concentration camp, would be executed in front of thousands of people. But Anton Dossler was a man who was said to have been responsible for the executions of Allied soldiers, and this was considered a war crime. He did try to state that he was only passing on orders to firing squads, but at the end of the war, his trial was shown around the world, and it showed the ruthlessness of the German army officials. Join us today to look at the brutal execution of the German general shot by the Americans, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Anton Dostler was born on the 10th of May 1891, inside of Munich in Germany. He had a normal upbringing, but at an early age he did sign up to become a member of the German armed forces and the military. Dostler joined the army in 1910, and this would begin his decades-long service inside of the armed forces. He began his life in the military as a junior officer, and he would serve during the First World War. It's not known how much action Dostler saw during World War I, but he would emerge as a respected member of the armed forces. He returned to life following the war, and he would become one of the men who remained inside of the limited German army. Following the end of World War I, the German army was restricted to 100,000 soldiers, and Doster was part of what was known as the Reichsheer, and he would continue to rise into senior positions within the army. At the beginning of the Second World War, and during the invasion of Poland, he would work as a chief of staff for the 7th Army. The 7th Army would work defending the French border region at the start of the war, and Anton Dossler was involved in making sure that Germany was not invaded, at any part by the French or enemy forces. At the time the Germans were on the offensive, and were not the defensive ones. And the armed forces, on their enemies, were concentrated on fighting them on their own lands, rather than invading. This meant that Dossler's job was relatively easy and straightforward. After this job, Dossler was then given a role as a commander, and he would be liked by Hitler, and was also well trusted by other members of the Wehrmacht High Command. He would oversee the 57th Infantry Division in 1941 and 1942, and the division then saw action inside of Poland following the invasion. But then they would be transferred to take part in the invasion of the Soviet Union, and Dossler commanded the units during the early part of Operation Barbarossa, and this was when the Germans were rampaging into different lands and countries, and they would capture different villages and towns. But Dossler then moved over yet again, and was placed in command of the 163rd Infantry Division in 1942, and these also fought in the Soviet Union. They fought in the thickest presses of the Soviet Union, and were even deployed close to the Arctic Circle. But further transfers came for Anton Dossler, and he then commanded the 7th Army Corps, and was moved from the Eastern Front to work inside of Italy, and he served as a commander of the Venetian coast. He was a man who was very well trusted, and was seen as a competent general inside of Italy, and he would be responsible for a war crime that would secure his execution. On the 22nd of March 1944, there were 15 American soldiers, including two officers, who landed onto the Italian coast. They would land 15 kilometres north of La Spezia, which was deep behind enemy lines. This was Operation Ginny 2, a mission in which the American commandos would try to conduct sabotage upon the German army during the Italian campaign. The plan was to blow up railway tunnels, which would break off communications and transport links for the Germans in central Italy. A previous attempt to do this failed, as the commandos could not find the tunnels, but a second try saw the American soldiers being dropped again in the wrong place. These men were dressed in proper American uniform, and they did not have civilian clothing. They were dressed in the correct uniform, as if they should be captured, they should have been treated as prisoners of war. Three of them did wear paratrooper boots, and some did have their jackets turned inside out, to hide any American army insignia. They had no markings that said they were linked to the Office of Strategic Services, and they were armed with Colt 45 pistols, fighting knives, and six of the men had machine guns. The plan was to destroy a tunnel at Framura, between La Spezia and Genoa, 
but the men knew they were in the wrong place and wrong area. They then had to try and hide out, before they would hopefully be rescued, and they would hide in the day, and then during the night try to establish contact with their PT boats, and then try to carry out the mission. The Americans left their rubber boats and explosives to blow the bridge where they could, and near to Carpeneggio, they found an empty barn. But on the 23rd of March, two men tried to find food, and they then encountered a farmer who did help them. But around the same time, an Italian fisherman spoke with local fascist policemen, who then found the boats of the Americans, and they then located the explosives. These then spoke to the German command detachment, and then a search party was assembled to sweep the area. But all of the 15 soldiers who were hiding inside of the barn were captured following a short bit of fighting. They were then taken to the German headquarters of the 135th Fortress Brigade, based in La Spezia. Fourteen of these men did not give over any information, however one would tell under torture the full information of the commando raid, and how they were planning to blow up the tunnels. This was then sent to the offices of Anton Dossler, and the headquarters of the 75th Army Corps, and Dossler then spoke to his superior Field Marshal Albert Kesselring about what had happened. Dossler wanted to know what to do with the prisoners, and then Kesselring said the men should be executed in accordance with the commando order, the decree stated by Hitler that any Allied commando should be executed without trial. One of Doster's assistants had refused to sign the order, as he knew these men were in proper uniform and that they should have not been executed. But Anton Dostler would be the one who signed off the execution order, and Colonel Almers, the man of the 135th Fortress Brigade, was ordered to carry out the execution, but he did not want to do this. He asked Dostler to delay, but Dostler refused to allow any concessions. There were further attempts to stop the Americans, but all 15 of them were executed in the morning of the 26th of March 1944 at Punta Bianca. The American soldiers were lined up by the Germans on a rocky outcrop, and they were then executed and were buried in a mass grave. It was this order that resulted in Anton Dossler himself being sentenced to death. Following the invasion of Italy, he was captured, and the American forces took him as a prisoner of war, but they discovered what had occurred with the commando team. Because of this, Dossler was found responsible, and he was placed on trial on the 8th of May 1945, and he was accused of war crimes. His military tribunal occurred at the seat of the Supreme Allied Commando, based in the Royal Palace in Caserta, and it would be the first Allied war crimes trial of World War II. Dossler was accused of having carried out an illegal order, which violated the Geneva Convention, and it resulted in the murder and slaughter of Allied soldiers. Dossler claimed that his superior, Kesselring, had issued the executions, and that Dossler had just passed this on. But he claimed that the executions of the Americans was lawful, but he tried to wash his hands with the responsibility. However, this was not accepted, and despite appealing for clemency, Anton Dossler was found guilty of war crimes. It was said he was in violation of Article 2 of the 1939 Geneva Convention on Prisoners of War, and that no soldier, and still less a commanding general, can be heard to say that he considered the summary shooting of prisoners of war as legitimate, even as a reprisal. But Dossler was a convicted war criminal, and the appeals were based upon the clothes that the Americans were wearing, as if they were found to have been in disguise as civilians or German soldiers, then their executions would have been deemed lawful, as they would have been classed as enemy spies. But due to the fact they were wearing American uniforms, it was classed as a war crime. But Anton Dossler was sentenced to death, and the execution would take place inside the Italian city of Aversa. He was to die by a firing squad, as a soldier would have wished for his execution. A 12-man group of American soldiers were gathered for this, and they were assembled before 8am on the 1st of December 1945, but Dossler was then brought out from his prison cell, and he was taken to a firing range. At the bottom of the range was a stake, and he was tied to the execution post, and his arms were bound, as were his legs. A black hood was then placed over his head, and the officer in charge then gave the order to fire. He was killed instantly, and following his execution, his body was gathered and was wrapped in a white cloth before it was buried in a German war cemetery. But Anton Dossler was a very prominent member of the German military, and he was a man who was well trusted by Hitler and other Wehrmacht generals. What signed his death warrant, though, was the fact he had signed off on the executions of American prisoners of war, who should have been given better treatment than they received. These men should not have been executed, but they should have been allowed to live out the rest of the war inside of a prisoner of war camp. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, 
please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.